With my practice, I think the thing that I'm most interested in is maybe the relationship between word and image, and specifically the idea of uh, the metaphor. So the show Alpha Salad is actually arranged in a chronological narrative. So we have eight rooms in the exhibition. In room one, we start with seeds, and by room eight, we're in the restaurant, so it's diners. And so each space, there's a different focus for the room. So we move from seeds to photons, to hormones, to muscles, to nerves, bodies, servers, and then finally diners. Basically, treating the idea of food service as a cosmogony, moving from like thinking about it almost in terms of the, the beginning of the world to the end of the world or apocalypse. So the reason that I'm using the title Alpha Salad is, is kind of in reference to this, to the, the religious nature of that, of the Alpha and the Omega. So for the, for the exhibition, the, the initial impetus was a painting of Flemish still life in the museum in Brussels. And in this painting, there was a, a cooked lobster and it was this beautiful vermilion red. What's interesting about a lobster is that when it's living and when it's alive, it's got this kind of bluish grayish color. But then when it's boiled alive in the most excruciating way possible, it turns this beautiful crimson vermilion red and it makes it feel like it's almost the, you know, that it's the, the telos or the destiny of the lobster to be cooked. I love the idea of the kind of metaphysics of that, that in its DNA, in the pigments in its shell, there's this secret, there's almost like this Easter egg that in its natural environment, it's, this is never going to happen, it's never going to reach these temperatures, but then when you do the most terrible thing to this lobster, it changes color. I find it fascinating as a way to start thinking about more metaphysical themes and the afterlife and, and maybe questions around spirituality, about power, about all these kind of things. In the show I'm interested a lot in the idea of taste and uh, maybe even from the kind of literal sense of the word uh, and the tongue. So in the final room there's, there's a painting which is a close-up and an x-ray of the surface of the tongue with the taste buds on it. In the body the tongue is the kind of like the antechamber for the stomach and for the interior of the body. And so taste, from an evolutionary biology perspective, was a way to kind of test whether something is going to poison you or whether it's going to nourish you. And so we need to take things into our body uh, to sustain ourselves, but also we need to be able to tell what's good and what's bad. And so I was kind of contrasting that view of taste with a second view of taste, which is the idea of pleasure and the idea of that what we more identify taste as as a kind of an aesthetic, which is that you could, it brings you enjoyment, it, is, it doesn't have a moral perspective, it's just a pleasure perspective. And so I was interested a lot in those two different modes of taste. In the exhibition there's this, the figure of the waiter reappears a few times, and it's a character that I'm very interested in, uh, because the waiter, as opposed to the chef, the chef works behind the scenes, the waiter is front of house and is involved in uh, dealing with the clients. So as well as the kind of physical work that they have to do, they, they're also obliged to, to present the right kind of face, to, to perform service in the right kind of way to please the client. And I think there's uh, something interesting in, the, in relationship to the logic of the closet, of growing up gay, because there's also this kind of performativity and how to disappear into the role of of heteronormativity, it's the same way that the waiter has to disappear into the, the needs and the wants of the client. So the waiter kind of becomes this self-portrait a bit and the waiters will always have these flushed cheeks and it's this idea of the embarrassment and the body kind of responding to the situation even against your will, which is something that was happening to me a lot when I worked in the service industry, this, this idea of your uh, not being in control of, of what your body does while you're trying to perform this kind of smooth service. So yeah, there's, there's a lot of references to this, uh, the kind of performance of, of uh, the waiter. When Bryony offered me the chance to do the show, she also suggested that I could work with the archive from the University of Leeds, Special Collections, and be able to use some objects and some artworks in the show. And what was really exciting to me when I started browsing through the archive was there's a lot of uh, letters, there's a lot of books, especially around the period of the kind of decadence, Aubrey Beardsley, Oscar Wilde, people like that. And then they also had some works by Duncan Grant, who's somebody I've been very interested in. In fact, I've referenced one of his works. There's a, 
a version of his works, Bathers, that I've uh, done a kind of version of in the show. I have a work, uh, a book, an early print by Arthur Macken with a, with a print illustration by Aubrey Beardsley, which was really exciting to have as well. And basically the guiding principle for me was a kind of a mixture of uh, people who I'd been interested in prior to this and, and whose work related to the themes of the exhibition, but also I was kind of going in with even a more aesthetic angle and really just looking, especially for some of the paintings that I've chosen, just things that I felt would, would harmonize with, with the interests in the show. So it was kind of half working kind of along the conceptual lines of the show and then half purely in the aesthetics realm, and which also ties into the theme of the show in terms of in that it deals with taste and aesthetics a lot.